Hi everyone, Jeff here from Room to Discover, and today I wanna to share with you what I believe is the number one tool for online teaching and learning, and that is Google Classroom. If you've never used Google Classroom, this brief tutorial will help you get started and um, give you an overview of some of its best features. Now, we're not gonna go fully into detail on all of the things that you can do with it, but if you subscribe to our channel, you'll find other videos that go into more detail. Today, we're going to do three things. Uh, quickly go over the benefits of using Google Classroom, talk about some of its major features, and then give you an overview, a step-by-step, -step of how to get your class quickly up and running using this amazing tool. So what are the benefits of using Google Classroom? Well, first, it's intuitive. And this is just a feature of Google, right? Almost everything they make, it's a minute to learn, a lifetime to master. And you'll see today, you can just get up and running with Google Classroom really quickly, but you're always going to discover more and more uh, little things that it can do. Now, the second benefit to Google Classroom is that it doesn't do anything, but it lets you do almost anything. So sometimes people are not sure, what does Google Classroom do? Does it have questions? Does it have videos? No, it doesn't have any of that. And there are a lot of great platforms out there, um, you know, Khan Academy, IXL. If you want something with content on a specific subject that's preloaded, that's in there. What Google Classroom does is it takes the things that you're already doing, the, the worksheets you're using, the, the textbook, the assignments you give, the discussions, all of the things that you already do with your classroom, and it just makes them so much easier to, to organize and will save you a ton of time. So a few of the ways that Google Classroom will make your life easier, first, it's the single sign-on. If you're using Google, if you have a Google school, you use Gmail, you use Google Calendar, you use Google Drive, all of these things that you only have one account and you can access all of them. That's a huge benefit. It's also great for organizing communication. When you use Google Classroom, you can cut out the email. I really uh, encourage you, don't email back and forth with students, especially if you're teaching online. It can very quickly get overwhelming. We'll look at the communication features in Google Classroom, that whether it's one-way communication, you your students, whether it's two-way communications, discussions, you can do all of that. Um, another benefit is the way that it manages your documents. If you're the type of person like I was as a teacher, where you always have a big stack of papers on your desk, whether it's papers to grade, whether it's things to hand out, Google Classroom makes it so much easier. You, you put things on there digitally, uh, there's, there's folders, the way you send things to students, the way you collect things, everything is much easier. Um, and finally, the benefit is the, the grade book, the way that it grades. Some assignments are automatically grading, or if you grade assignments in Google Classroom, it just automatically puts that in. It can calculate averages in real time, so it'll make that whole grading process easier as well. And now, the features. The features are how Google Classroom gives these benefits. And there's three really important features. One is the stream. The stream is kind of like a, like a social media type uh, layout where you can post things and students can respond to each other. That's how we manage our communication is in the stream. The second feature is called Classwork. And this is another tab where you can assign work to students and we'll look at all the different ways that you can assign work and collect work. Um, and finally, um, the other feature is Google Drive integration. And what this means is that with your assignments, you can uh, assign work using a Google Doc, using Google Slides, Google Sheets, anything that you can put on your Google Drive, you can integrate into a document. So that kind of really um, is itself its own feature, the ability to work with Google Drive documents. And let's look at the overview of how Classroom is going to change your online class. As you can see, I've set up a split screen here, and on one side, we're gonna look at the teacher view, and on the other side, we'll see the, t the student view so that we can go back and forth and you can um, understand what's happening on both ends. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to classroom.google.com. Now, we're assuming here that you have a Google account. If you don't, obviously, you'll have to create one. And uh, so just logging in, going to classroom, you can see I have some classes here already. First thing is go up to this plus, join class if you're a student, but we want to create a class. We'll call this demo. Now right on my home screen, I like these sneakers, uh, but if I didn't, I can change the theme or upload a photo. What I really need here is my class code. Now there's more than one way to add students, 
I think the best is with the class code. Sometimes the emails uh, get a little buggy and they need to accept you as a teacher anyway. But now that I have the class code, I copied it. All I need to do is go over and now I'm in my student view. This is just another personal Gmail account I have. And I click join class. I just enter the class code. So simple as that, I've created a class and I've uh, added a student. Back over to my teacher view under people and I can see I have my first student in the class. So we've already gotten up and running in just a minute. So the next thing that I'm gonna to wanna to do is take a look at my stream and see how this works with communication. Um, again, very intuitive, share something with my class. I click here, hello everyone, I post this. And once I post this in my stream, I just have to refresh and the student sees this. Now, let's say they want to ask me, what's tonight's homework, right? They can post that as a response. They could even, and this is so much better than doing this via email. Uh, when I was using this with my students, somebody would write something, oh, I forgot what pages we had to read tonight. And before I would even get to it, another student had responded and answered the question. Next feature we wanna look at is how do we assign work? So I go over to classwork. Now, there are a ton of things you can do um, just by cr clicking this create button. We're not gonna go into detail about every one of these, but subscribe to our channel and stay tuned uh, we'll go into more depth on each of these. Uh, one that's really cool is the quiz assignment. It uses a Google form. You can set the answers. It can automatically grade it, puts it right into your grade book. But we're going to create a simple assignment today. Um, what's really cool about this is I've created a slideshow. I'm going to add that. What I want to do is not just let them view it. If I'm just sending them something that I want them to read, they can view it. Or I don't want them necessarily to edit it because they're editing my file, my template. But if I do make a copy for each student, boom, this will create a separate slideshow for each student. Uh, I can set the points. So now that I've assigned this, I'm going to jump over to my student view again, go to classwork, and, I, and we have short story slideshow. Now, if I click on this and how cool is this? This is a short story presentation. So they could come in here, put in the names of everybody in their group. Um, so I had, I've had i created a, a slide for each part of the story. So this is a great way for them to learn the parts of the story, but also um, reading comprehension. And then when they're done with this, you know, put an image here, put a rising action image. Now they have a little presentation. We've made our changes and I'm going to... turn it in. So now we jump back to our teacher view. Short story shot. Now I can see that one is turned in. There's zero still outstanding. I view the assignment and say great job. Uh, 49 out of 50. I can look at the work. I, should, I guess I should look at the work before I grade it. And then when I'm ready, I just click return. That sends it back and he gets to see his grade. Forty-nine out of fifty. Let's take a look at our grade book. And now I see I have one assignment, I have one student. Obviously if I had more assignments and more students there would be more grades in there. But I'm not seeing any average, right? So the question next is what do I do with all these grades? Um, for that I'm gonna have to go into my settings and look at grade calculation. I generally use the total points, but I know some people do weighted by category. So if you wanted to do weighted by category, then you have to add your categories. And maybe I say um, tests are 50% and quizzes are 50%. So now I have a full category, I can decide do I want to show my overall grade to my students? Save these changes. And then now I see an overall grade here and the student, if I go to view your work, now I can see 98% overall average. And the one more thing that I want to show before we go are the, the general settings. So this is where you can set on my stream, students can post and comment. So posting means they can put a new post at the top of the stream. If they have a question to ask and comment means they can respond to those posts. Um, 
I like this one. It's the it's the open one. It gives them more ownership. They're more interactive. But if you decide you only want them to respond, you can send that or you can lock it down and only allow teachers to post and comment. So that should be enough to get you started and to use a lot of the features. Again, uh, there's so much more that you can do with it and we'll be adding more detail in other videos, but um, hopefully this was a helpful way to get started with Google Classroom. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that video, let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Then head over to roomtodiscover.com slash online. You'll find downloadable resources, webinars, online coaching, everything that you need to take charge of your own professional development and learn from the comfort of your own home. That's roomtodiscover.com slash online. We'll see you there.